to zerohedge.com for lease the commercial real estate apocalypse in photos <laughs> cj we're going to get into some graphics here in early 2017 we first reported a bearish trade emerged which quickly gained popularity in the investment community and was dubbed the next big short at the time only a few bearish funds were positioned for a retail apocalypse that could spur a wave of defaults. Fast forward to today, coronavirus outbreak and the ensuing lockdown has essentially frozen the commercial real estate market. Buildings that were once used for restaurants, offices, hotels, spas, and or anything else that is classified non-essential have seen soaring vacancies. And just as an aside with the story we brought you yesterday, quick reminder, New York City is going to be especially hurt from this economically, and they are going to be eating a lot of crow when the numbers come out in the next few months. And the perspective makes it obvious that the shutdown was unnecessary. The cure was worse than the disease. New York City, Manhattan, the most expensive retail and commercial space in the world is going to just be uh, seen such upheaval this is single handily handedly sending the commercial property market into chaos as vacancy soar tremendous downward pressure is being put on almost every asset class tied to commercial real estate the latest trepp remittance data compiled by morgan stanley showed a quarter of all commercial mortgage-backed securities cmbs could be on the verge of default. CMBS delinquency surged <clears throat> to a new high in April as lockdowns continued. So if you would pull up that first graphic there, CJ Exhibit 3, delinquent loans versus uh, historic uh, delinquent rate delinquency rates, uh, the number of, of those loans is seeing a huge spike here. And this is just, you know, something that has been trending since, if you look, the bottom left of this chart is October 2012, going up to uh, where we are today uh, in 2020. So going now to the next graphic. This is, by the way, this, this one, this is now commercial capitulation. Need some explanation, right? And I love that they have on the right side of this graphic, CJ, if you can just zoom in a little bit there. Rona, <laughs> Rona, look at that drop off here. So for more color on the collapse, mcm-ct.com create a sub thread showing the economic devastation down here in the lighthouse point to Delray Beach area on a main commercial slash travel route. It appears MCM recently drove up and down a stretch of highway in South Florida an area of great wealth and said three months ago one could count four lease signs on this whole route on a few hands which now appears to have significantly multiplied during lockdown so here's that graphic if you scroll up again or scroll down a little more than to that cj we can just go over that so here there going down here are pictures of many probably most of the four lease signs as of yesterday remember there used to be very few just months ago each one of these comes with tragedy before it in my opinion needs a very creditworthy new tenant willing to make a big slash long-term commitment. So just, wow, look at this, this boom, boom. And then, yeah, this is just overwhelming. So the tweet, rebuilding credit, creditworthiness from these uh, aborted slash terminated or insolvency related lease and business blows will take years. The only way this could have been prevented was if the government provided a national bank, a national backstop directly before these signs appeared. Now. Again, to zoom out <clears throat> to the bigger picture here first, in you know the, the the recovery for this taking years. This is very much tied to the forced unemployment crisis, and it's going to make it a lot worse. As libertarians, a lot of us are tempted to, excuse me, you know, sneer at the economically illiterate, which is you know all of us before we educated ourselves because they don't teach economics in government schools. Obviously, not in in uh, middle school, high school. Uh, in the curricula there or, or in, in any way that will allow you to engage and understand what's happening here. No civics classes anymore. And th there are a lot of people who are in the category of the uh, economically ignorant 
who see this and go, oh yeah, eat the rich, screw the employers. And it's like, mm, those are the people that, that was how you got jobs. And what this economic manipulation represents is a concentration of economic and political power. This is a ripoff. This is how these economic manipulations, these planned crashes have always been throughout the history of fiat currencies when the markets have been subject to this kind of massive manipulation. Think about it for just a second. If everybody is made desperate for just a short period of time, all of these buildings go up for lease. Eventually, they get uh, default on the loans. People sell their properties. People right now selling land, selling assets, even in the vehicle market, used vehicles. You can see people just desperate. If you're out of work, you have a spare vehicle. Well, guess what? Now you're selling that vehicle. Guess what? So is everybody else. Who's buying? Who's buying? The people who are profiting off this crisis. You've heard the quote from Thomas Jefferson. I am afraid that if we allow our money to be controlled by a central bank where they are able to manipulate inflation and deflation, we will find ourselves in a generation or two waking up homeless on the continent our forefathers conquered. Now, yes, I, I'm butchering the quote. And yes, there are plenty of Eurocentric biases within that statement, but the main point remains clear. We are about to wake up homeless. This is the crisis that Jefferson predicted would come with any central bank. That is their mechanism of passing out money right now. What do they give us money for? $1,200. And hey, look, good for us. We got another $1,200 check on the way. Is that going to be enough to buy these properties, this real estate, all those cars on the market even? Just to, like, I, I could talk in the, at the bigger abstract level and talk about commercial real estate and talk about the properties that we are going to see bought up, the, um, the companies that are going to be bought up, the, the consolidation of power and wealth that is happening in all this. And it, it's a bit abstract, but just the car example. Guess what? You and all your bartender, server, stripper friends are now out of work and you're all trying to sell your cars to each other. Your $1,200 checks are not gonna do it. Prices are gonna plummet for everything that is not truly essential, immediately survival essential, food, water, clothing, energy, things like that, right? Cell phone bills, gasoline, auto repairs. Everything outside of that, prices are plummeting right now. And what this story reveals is so important in the real estate market is that in commercial real estate, you might, again, if you resent the rich, you might be tempted to see the entrepreneurs in so many of these businesses suffering, saying, ah, yeah, screw the boss man. Right? This is Adam versus the man. Down with the man. No, 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 no. What this represents is a consolidation of power where your employers are losing out, bankers and major corporations are winning, and we are all getting screwed over.